something into your black box and then if it comes out, uh, you don't know, really know whether it's, it's working or not. And if the, the system starts to drift, maybe you're not getting the output that you originally had. So in an engineering world, you have a closed loop system where you put something in, you've got a known system, the black box that's operating on this, and you get an output. And if things start to change, you want to monitor that output and make adjustments back into the input, or you want to make adjustments into your black box system. That's what the government is doing. That's why privacy matters. People say, I don't care if the NSA is watching me. I don't have anything that I'm hiding. Maybe all you're doing is talking about the Oscars or your favorite television program. But let me tell you something. They're looking at what you're reading, and they want to know if their propaganda is working, that's why the FDA is putting out this request for somebody to do this for them. That's why they've got this request for proposal. They want people to say, to tell them if their propaganda is working. They want people, they want to know what you're thinking. Are you buying their mindless propaganda? Are they winning the info war? Are they winning the PSYOP? And then the other reason you need to be concerned about privacy is because it isn't just the NSA or the CIA, or the FBI that is watching everything that you're doing. It is also people like the FDA are monitoring the actions of whistleblowers, and they can use it to blackmail, to destroy the character of people who are honest individuals who say, this device from General Electric is leaking dangerous amounts of radiation. Well, they want to destroy that guy because they want to help General Electric. And the really dangerous thing, as I see it coming down the road, is that the government, once everybody is attuned to the fact that the government is watching what everybody says and knows everything about everybody and the public says we're fine with that, at that point then the government can make up anything that it wants to about anyone. If you don't have any skeletons in your closet, they can make up those skeletons and they can tell the public and the public will believe it. The public believed that the Sarnayev brothers set down those backpacks. Now, we supposedly had video footage, and we were told that the government has cameras everywhere. The government sees everything. The government knows everything. And the government knows that those are the guys that we're looking for. Now, we never saw them setting the backpack down. They, we didn't have to see video of an explosion. We didn't have to see video of people dying, being torn apart by a bomb. But I would have liked to have seen this video that they supposedly have of the Sarnea brothers setting down the backpacks, especially when the backpacks were supposedly a different color than the backpack of one of the brothers. I would like to see that they set them down in the places where the explosion actually occurred. And of course, the FBI said, we've seen those pictures. We have those pictures. And the governor of Massachusetts said, yes, I've, we have those pictures. And finally, when somebody asked him the obvious question, have you seen those pictures? And so, uh, uh, well, uh, actually, no, no, I haven't seen those pictures, but the FBI told me that they've got them. See, that's the really dangerous thing. The really dangerous thing is when we become so dependent on the government and we're so intimidated by the government that we think that they know everything, that they see everything, and that they are going to be honest with us, that they're honest actors, that they don't have any ulterior motives, that the FDA is really not trying to cover for their crony capitalists at General Electric, that the FDA is really watching out for your health with the food and the drug stuff. I just talked on the nightly news last week to Mark Baker, Baker's Green Acres in Michigan. He's one of the farmers where the state of Michigan came in and said, you're no longer going to be allowed to have these types of pigs. We're only going to allow the types of pigs that are grown in big agri factories. Now your pigs, because you're letting them free range feed on your farm, you've got pigs that they've got some hair on them. So they look like feral pigs. We're going to declare them to be invasive species. And that's what they did. They came after him and all the farmers who had been raising these types of pigs for decades. And on all the other farms, except for two, Mark Baker and one other person who stood up to them, they came on the farms and they shot the pigs. Now, Mark fought them for almost three years, and he just won a decision last week saying that they are no longer going to come after him, but they wouldn't give a definition of what an invasive species is. So they're still going to threaten and intimidate the other farmers who don't stand up to their tyranny. They're going to still intimidate and threaten everyone who goes with their bluff, just like the TSA. 
Remember when we had John Corbett stand up to the TSA and show that they couldn't see the devices if it's on your side? What did they do? They gave John Corbett a lifetime pass. Don't worry about it. Don't complain. Just go along and you know what? If you stand up, we'll let you go. But everybody else, we're going to enforce tyranny. The ultimate survival bug out lightweight fishing pole is MROD. Made by a family owned American company and assembled in Idaho, MROD fishing gear comes with a lifetime warranty and 90 day money back guarantee. MROD weighs just 8 ounces and breaks down to 14 inches. MROD's indestructible stainless steel compact design makes it perfect to take anywhere. Cast your eyes now at MROD.com. That's E M M R O D.com. MROD. Fish to survive, survive to fish. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions. SilverLungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at SilverLungs.com. That's SilverLungs.com. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy byproducts from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. It's time for a home security quiz. What effective home security device is smaller than a coffee cup, fakes out burglars into thinking someone is home at your house while you're away, plugs into any wall outlet, is recommended by many police departments, and sells for less than $30? Yes, it's fake TV. This year, about one in every 50 U.S. homes will have a break-in, with burglars usually picking the easy target, a dark house that looks like no one is home. Fake TV is a small electronic security device that makes it look like someone is home watching TV by simulating the light from a real TV. Fake TV could be the difference between coming home to a secure house or one that's been ransacked. To get your fake TV for only $29.95 with free shipping, go to faketv.com or call 1-877-5-FAKE-TV. That's 877-532-5388 or go to faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. <laughs> Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. I'm going to be joined in the next segment with Anthony Gucciardi. We're going to be talking about the long history of the FDA, just as I was talking about the last segment. We're talking about how the FDA is now has a request out to monitor social media chatter about product risks. That's right. They want people to bid on that function. They want to know what people are talking about. They want their the public's sentiment to be analyzed. They want a sample of verbatim consumer comments they want to know where they're getting their information that's very troubling 
We've seen that same kind of activity by the FCC. You know, they had this news media survey that they were going to do where they were going to embed in a, as part of a study. They were going to embed people from the FCC in newsrooms and they were going to ask questions. How do you decide which stories you're going to cover? Who makes these decisions? How are women and minorities represented? A whole slew of things like that they were going to look at. But everybody was concerned that they were embedded, they were getting involved with the content not just with the radio frequencies, which is what the FCC was originally set up to do. They don't have any authority to get involved in the content. That's protected under the First Amendment. They only were set up to help manage the kind of conflict that you could have if two local radio stations are broadcasting over the same frequency. So they were set up to auction off those frequencies and to control them. They have gradually exercised more and more control over content under the guise that this is something that is being put out there on the public airwaves, since they give you permission to use this radio frequency, then they could they could control certain content like the words that you use. They could say you can't have profanity or you can't show nudity or whatever. But as you had cable come in and people started paying for that and getting that directly into their home, the FCC was not allowed to exercise control over that. That's beginning to change. And that's something we should all be concerned about. Remember that this FCC study was also going to go into newspapers. The FCC has no reason to get involved in newspapers. The FCC has no reason to get involved in cable allocations or bandwidth. That is something that they should not be involved in. They should not be involved in content. And yet we see that Google is very concerned that the FCC is going to start getting involved in Internet content. There are a lot of people that are saying that they believe that they're going to essentially enact CISPA in a back door. Remember Obama said, you know, if he can't get things through in the legislature, he's just going to do it anyway in this year of action. Well, one of the ways that he does that is with these regulatory agencies like the FDA, like the FCC. So what they can what they're asserting that they're going to do is start to look at content and that the FCC might take down content based on Copyright claims. Again, we're back to CISPA, SOPA, ACTA, all of these different efforts to take over control of the Internet that have been defeated over and over again when they've come before the legislature. So let's not take it before the legislature. Let's just give it to the FCC, say that it's within their scope, and then the FCC can make those determinations. See, one of the problems with this from the very beginning was that someone could just assert that you have a copyright issue and take down your entire website over one issue. And you are not innocent until proven guilty. You don't get your chance in court. They just make the assertion and take it down. And of course, we've seen that happen over and over again. That was the way they've been operating the war of drugs, the war against American citizens for a very long time. It wasn't really about stopping drug use. It was about establishing a legal precedent that the government could make assertions about you and then seize your property and do other things to you without you ever having a day in court to violate the Constitution. And everybody, whether they were supportive of drug use for marijuana or what, everyone should be concerned about that. I don't use drugs. I don't recommend that you use drugs, but I have seen the specter, the boogeyman of drugs used to scare people into giving up on our legal system that it has taken us, taken us centuries to enact. A blockade against government tyranny and people are just giving up on that because they are scared about the boogeyman of drugs or because they're scared later on about the boogeyman of Osama bin Laden. They just abandon it, most of the people do. So we have to not allow them to continually expand into these areas because we're afraid of something. And we can't allow companies or organizations like the FDA to stand up for companies like General Electric. And if there's a harmful device that they're putting out because they like General Electric, they go after a whistleblower and they attack him personally because they have looked at all of his personal information on his computer. They put spyware on his computer. They took pictures of him. Remember? We were telling you that would happen. Alex has been telling you about that for years. And people say, oh, that's crazy. They can't, they can't monitor your cameras. <laughs> it's, it's not only been done, it's very passe at this point. Everybody knows that. The question is, what are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about your health? 
take control of your health. We're also going to be talking to Kathleen Willey in the next hour about what the Clintons did to her. So stay tuned. Anthony Gucciardi is coming right up. We'll be right back.